guys, welcome back to the channel. So I want to start off this video by saying I have eye surgery in like two and a half weeks coming up. So there's a lot going on with the C35. I have parts that are in right now, but I also have another shipment of more parts coming in. Although I think I'm going to be down recovering for a bit and I will probably be a little bit like inactive after that. The goal is to try and get as much done as I can and get as many parts installed on the C35 before my surgery. Now also Christmas is in a couple days too. It should be going into paint, I believe the second week of February is what I'm scheduled for. And I think I have a color picked out for it. So I'm really excited. And the goal is to try and have the car at least aesthetically ready and done for Riverside. Debut it for Riverside, have it down there to enjoy it. And then after Riverside, I plan on doing the rear subframe, do all new bushings. Not too sure on what I wanna do with the diff yet, if I'm just gonna weld it or do VLSD or what, but that will be after. And then hopefully sometime in the early summer, it will be my, I'll be taking it to my first drift track event. These are all parts that came in from Japan. My friend Joe, tagged down below, he was the one that helped me get a lot of these parts. My next shipment of other parts are through another friend, but Joe is someone that has been importing a lot of parts for a lot of people. And he, I tell him to hook it up with some snacks. So there's better be some more snacks in these boxes, Joe. Honestly, I was more excited for the snacks. So I got a Vertex 330 10 star wheel, red, kind of will flow and match with the seat. Then I got two seat rails. Hopefully this works. Did some research, these should work. And then I got a Spec R HPI for a mount intercooler for the C35 and I got these side markers or fender markers, side markers, whatever. They were LED, should plug in. Hopefully they don't hyper blink. I do have more resistors just in case. So I just plugged this one in, testing it out. I have the turn signal on and no hyper blinking. So it's functioning just as it should. Pretty easy. So these I found on Yahoo Auction Japan. Um, I don't remember how much they were, maybe 20, 30 bucks shipped. So full LED, plug and play. And looks a lot better than ones with missing lenses. So looks good. idiot without even checking I put the wrong bracket on the seats but quick and easy uh, exchange so now the seat belt and the mounts are on the right side and it's time to take out the factory seat so I, I got the seat out and Drew's here helping me out but every single bolt and was 
stripped. So what we're doing right now is drilling everything out, tapping it, and then we are using Healy coils. So these two right here are already done. This is a new bolt. And we're good. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that on the next one. It's a little hot, but the car didn't catch on fire, it's fine. Just a quick explanation. <clears throat> the factory bolts on like most Nissans of the 90s that as far as I know, like I believe C33s, C35s, R34s, I think R32, R33s. The seat bolts are M10 by 1.25, <clears throat> about approximately 30 millimeters. So I bought a helicoil kit, which matches that um, <clears throat> those dimensions. And then you need a 13 by 32 drill bit. So now that the holes are drilled with that drill bit, we're going to tap it and then insert the helicoil. So we'll show that next. These are the helicoils. So pretty much it's like an insert. So this will go into where the, you know, the hole we just drilled and it's gonna create threads and compress this and then the bolt will just thread right in. As far as it goes. So now that the hole's tapped, this is the helicoil kit. Here's a helicoil. Just turn this all the way through. And then once there's like a stopping point right here where this will catch it and you can't turn it anymore. So then once the heat coil is all the way in, you just unscrew the tool. And now you have threads. Threads in. And that's how you do it. Actually, I forgot one more thing. <laughs> there is uh, on the end, you see right there, you just grab a punch. punch it down. <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> Now with the seat on, after spending all day doing that, it's finally time to put on the new plates. So if you know, you know, I'm a huge bleach fan. So this is just me nerding out. All my plates have been Spanish slash bleach references. Hence Espada on the C33. And we have Respira for the C35. We will catch this up next morning, gonna drive it to the shop and get the engine bay dry blasted. So we're here at the shop and this is Don. He's gonna be doing dry splashing on the engine bay. And as you guys can see, uh, it's just really dusty, dirty. It is leaking oil, but what dry ice does, it pretty much is the safest way to, I, the way I like to describe it, it's like the safest way to clean anything that's delicate, which 
an engine bay like this that's full of wiring and uh, a lot of vacuum hoses and stuff like that, this is a really good candidate to do dry ice blasting on. So, Don, if you want to show me what the equipment is, how it works, and stuff like that. Yeah. So, as you said, the dry ice blasting is just a safer way to clean. You don't have to worry about using chemicals or water and a lot of electronics. And also, you can kind of play with the settings on the machine for delicate stuff where with like a pressure washer and stuff, you can't really do that. Um, this is the compressor you need. It needs a rotary screw. This is a 20 horsepower unit. And then it goes to a wet tank through a desiccant dryer and then to a dry tank. You have to, it's very important to have a lot of volume and dry air. So desiccant works really, really good for the dry air and just the volume is where you have to run a rotary screw compressor. They're designed to run a high duty cycle and not um, really take a break like a normal compressor, piston compressor would. Um, here's the machine that we have. It's a ICS. 030 EVO 2. It's a pretty precise gun setup. Uh, it's not a big industrial gun, so you can do more precision work with it. Um, you load the ice in the top, you use uh, three millimeter rice pellets, and then it's got a feeder that feeds it to the gun and it mixes the air with it. You can control everything from the consumption, which is like the size that goes through the gun of the dry ice where you can do like small little pieces or you can do the full pellets and then you can control the pressure which we can run up to 120 PSI with it and it'll take paint off. So, so crazy. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool little machine. It's funny how small this is and then how big yeah. all this <laughs> is to run this little thing. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's, <laughs> kind of shocking what you need and even this is on the smaller side of like this is probably bare minimum to run that compressor wise we want to eventually get two of the compressors in another big tank but in due time yeah yeah and that's with the bigger machine too to do more uh, production work a little bit quicker but for what you want to do with the engine bay it'll this will work perfect sweet another thing that when you're doing engine bays with dry ice is that you have to let the engine cool um, you could also run a lot of risk of, because ice is cold, so you don't want a cycle that it potentially cause any harm on anything like that. So you have to just wait for it to cool down, but pretty much it's ready to get started. The engine bay is all done and dry ice blasting is detailing like on a restoration level. It's, I feel like there's just no comparison when you have almost zero risk with dry ice blasting. This would be a bay that I'd be scared pressure washing, getting all wet and everything because of how intricate it is, but also because of how hard some things are to get if anything were to go wrong. The results kind of like, I mean, they speak for themselves and this was all actually within an hour too. Yeah. So this is about an hour. This was to be done traditionally by pressure washing it and scrubbing it and all of that. 
It's probably safe to assume to achieve this type of level of work, it would take you at least half of the day maybe, maybe yeah. even more. Yeah, because you'd have to get brushes out and start scrubbing. The biggest thing is what you can get in is all the cracks and stuff, which is cool. Like all like the deeper stuff like that you couldn't get with a traditional soap and bucket style. I mean, wash. even this. This right. was like, like you white. couldn't get in those fins. Yeah. You know, even to get the dirt. And then it's also cool because it takes off. So when plastic weathers, it gets a top layer. Well, that the little bit of the abrasiveness with the dry ice takes that top layer off, and then it's fresh plastic again. Sometimes, yes, the dye comes out of the plastic, but most of the time you can get it 75% better than what it was, like the top of the headlights that. So that really is what shows. <clears throat> yeah, this is this is actually something I've been wanting done on the C35 for a while. The weather just hasn't been playing in our favors and I'm happy that we finally got it here. So appreciate it, man. No Thank you. Clean Works, I'll tag them on my bio. The, it is, it's Don's business within Driver's Gallery. It's a space that we share here and it's dry. This is like a new venture that Don's going into. So now that I could showcase it on video, because pictures, it's, it's hard to like grasp the concept of how it works. But if you guys ever need anything done, we're located here in Valparaiso, Indiana. And you could either shoot Don a message on his social media for CleanWorks or even our phone number if you just look up driversgallery.com. Thank you guys so much for watching and if you like this video, please remember comment like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time